Well, good afternoon again, everyone, and welcome to PhotoBiz Live. This is Jen from the PhotoBiz team, and today we are joined by Colleen Gonzar for a webinar about making your work flow. Colleen owns two successful studios in central Pennsylvania. The studios are known for high school seniors, but also create beautiful images of newborns, families, children, and more. Not only is Colleen an outstanding photographer, she is the queens of forms and efficiency and will show in her teaching skills. In addition to getting the opportunity to learn from Colleen in today's webinar, we will also have a question and answer session so that you can ask your own questions at the end. You may submit your questions using the chat tool and they will be answered after the presentation. You can also join in the discussion on Twitter by using the hashtag PhotobizLive. In addition, we will be recording today's webinar so that you can replay it on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash photobiz. If at any point during today's webinar you have any difficulty hearing the speaker or seeing the slides, please like also use the comment box to let us know. With that being said, uh, it's my pleasure to turn things over to Colleen. Thank you, Jen. Hi, I just want to welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Colleen Gutzer and we're from Colleen and Company. Um, we do own and operate two studios in the central Pennsylvania area, and I would like to thank PhotoBiz today for having me here. Um, we are using PhotoBiz for numerous sites for our business, and our customer service is outstanding, and the sites are so easy to use. I don't know a lot about the web and about websites, but even I am capable of you know, going in and changing some text and some images. So we've been very, very happy, and I do thank them again. Our studio photographs families and children, newborns. We do a wide variety of everything. We do a lot of high school seniors. That's our main business. Um, we photograph about six to 700 seniors, and it accounts for over 50% of our sales. We also photograph tons and tons of sport teams, uh, little leagues, and a lot of high school teams. Okay, so the name of the webinar today is called Making Your Work Flow. And we're going to look at three different individual areas that many times a lot of photographers overlook. Um, I really think that photographers tend to look at the big picture of their studio without looking at the little small details and small things that will help their studio run efficiently. Um, we're going to talk about some camera room tips, some Photoshop tips that I personally use every day, and some business tips to help operate um, and create more business. That's what we're really looking for is to have a better flow. You know, our business is very seasonal, which is a really bad thing a lot. And it's we're, we're trying to get more and more business all the time. So that's what we're going to try to show you today. So we're going to go ahead and start with our camera room. I'm going to go ahead and show you a few tips that we use that help our sessions flow smoothly. Um, we're going to pay attention to the comfort of the client and how to help them feel that they're looking their best. All right, so this is, I'm going to back up just a couple little slides just to show you. This is what I was talking about. We were talking about our, um, the dry erase boards on the dressing room door. So we put their name, we put their different clothings in it. This is the dressing room. The one on the left is the family children room with the little built-in changing table. The one on the right is a senior room. These are the hooks and the posters that we were talking about. So you can actually have something to point to to actually show them what you're talking about. Here's two more examples. I just, you know, dressing rooms do not have to spend a lot of money, but they really need to be fun. I, you know, we really like when a senior walks in and says, this is so cool, I wish this was my bedroom. When really, in reality, we are spending just pennies to actually decorate this. You know, we took tissue paper and actually pasted it right to the wall using liquid starch. You know, so that entire wall looks really neat and, you know, people walk up and they look at it and they stare at it, but it only costs very, very few, you know, pennies. Here was another dressing room we did with the tissue paper, and the one on the right is another senior one, and we just did some striped colors and then matted and framed some different um, prints in between the stripes. So it just really gives it a really nice, classy look, but we're not spending a lot of money. You know, paint is very cheap. Um, the picture on the right, you can see that there, that's where our signs are a lot about the cell phones, the posters. You can see how it's all organized, the little basket of goodies for the kids. We have little gift items laying around in the family children area. We have some electrical outlet plugs for small children. We also have chapstick, which is really popular with all ages. In your camera room itself, the best thing we ever did many years ago was just to get the cords off the floor. It really doesn't matter how high your ceilings are. You can make a rail system work. 
it's one of the less expensive things that you're going to um, have to invest in, in your studio. Um, so we have the different rails. We have the soft box. We have a permanent hair light that is up there. So we have a traveling hair light. This is one of our best investments that we have made recently. So we have a very long rail that goes the length of one room in, in a room. And then we have different sets set up. So depending on what set we're going to be actually photographing at, we just have to reach up and move the hair light above each set. So it's really very time efficient. It's cost effective because it's only one light. And you can see on the screen there, that is where we do have, uh, we buy it from Talon's Photographic Supply, and you can contact them there. That's what an overall view of the traveling hair light would look like. You can see the cord just stretches from one length of the room to the other. We do a lot, of, we have a lot of permanent backgrounds, a lot of permanent sets set up in our camera rooms, and then many times we'll just take a fabric background and hang it up or push pin it to the wall. So now that adds another layer for something different to always add, um, add some variety. This is how we organize our backgrounds. Um, speed is really important, and so we like our backgrounds that don't have a pocket rod or grommets to hang them up. I don't want to take the time to have to thread a rod through a pocket. It's just not necessary. So we clamp everything. We actually went to you know, Walmart, bought some little hook and chains, and screwed them into our ceiling, and now we have little areas that we can go ahead and hang up backgrounds really quickly and easily. Also, when we're in our low-key camera area, we have a, a motorized background system. We can just clamp them onto the bottom of one of the canvases and then raise and lower that direction. We used to have tons of muslins that were great. Um, they were just in a big pile, a big ball in the pile of, in the corner of the room. And the problem was is I'm kind of lazy. I'm, I'm self-admitted. I'm a little bit lazy. And I did not want to take the effort or the time to root through the muslins to pull one out. I just would use the ones like on top that were easy to get to. We have a lot of um, bins that we used to put a lot of fabric in. And we really realized that just by putting fabric inside of a bin, us having to get the bin on the bottom, and, you know, take off the lid and pull out the fabric, it was not very time efficient or anything. So we just wanted to make sure that, um, that we were doing that. So... This is how we do. We have a rod, and we have the uh, clamps that are clamped right on the actual rod of the wall. This is it's just a, a very inexpensive towel bar that we get. You know, you can buy those anywhere, like at Target, and then we just buy some clamps and clamp them up there. So any any type of fabric that you're buying, if you're going to a fabric store and you're just buying loose fabric, or you're getting some freedom cloth type backgrounds, it's a great way to store them in every room. These are the fabric bins. You know, I really think that organization is the key to everything. You really need a spot. You need to get your chairs off the floor. You know, we put a lot of hooks everywhere. We had some little holders made that we can actually have the rugs. Um, we just we hang up a lot of things and just keep it very, very tidy. We have a lot of small canvas area canvases that we do. And um, we just stack those up. This is one way. If, you, if you're really, really crunched for space, this is a way that you can store a lot of backgrounds and add a lot of variety to your photography, but it's not going to take up a lot of space. So we have a lot of small little canvas areas. We put our pillows nice and high. We really believe in color harmony, as you can see in a lot of our images if you've ever looked at them. We really like a lot of color harmony, and a lot of that is done through small items like pillows. We have a motorized roller system. I just wanted to point this out because there's a lot of them out there on the market, but we are really, um, you know, um, partial to this one at the Denny's. I really like because I can raise them and lower them all at the same time. It has an automatic stop. So it is definitely well worth the investment for something that you can make your life a lot easier. And that's what I'm all about. Um, in our studio, we really try to, really try to um, make things very easy on ourselves and to be very efficient. Along with just your camera room being, you know, organized and everything, you have to set higher standards for yourself and for your photography. I know we have to do this on a yearly basis, and if I looked at my photography every single year since I've been photographing for the last 23 years, I know that I've improved every single year. And that's what we all need to strive to do is every year just improve a little bit more, just master one more light, master, you know, a couple more poses where you're really comfortable 
get better on your verbiage and how to talk to clients. So basically just learn your craft. In today's world, when everybody's a photographer, you know, just okay is not going to be good enough. And I'll note, now you get to all see my notes. Isn't that great? <laughs> Although we're not going to look at each of these individually today, you know, you have to realize that each and every one of these items makes, is what makes up variety in a camera room. Um, this is going to, what is going to make your photography stand out from your competition and from other photographers. And the best part is it's going to help your clients that they're not going to be able to choose which images to purchase. They're going to want them all, which is a great problem to have. So we're going to take a quick look at some posing tips. You know, the first pose on the left is really bad. It, you should never stand anybody like that. It's bad. It's straight towards the camera. Her hands are down low on her hips, which is the widest part of a body. You know, it's better if you lift her hands up. You can see the difference of how thick her waist looks just by moving her hands up, and she hasn't changed anything else. The picture on the right, you can see how much absolutely slimmer she looks. Slightly turned, always bend the front leg towards, you know, that's towards the camera, and her hands are on her waist, and you can see both of her elbows. It's just amazing, just from really slight adjustments, how much better that you can make somebody look. And you know, that goes whether or not they're a size 2 or a size 12, every girl wants to look thinner. You have to remember that it's just as easy to tilt ahead one direction as another, so you might as well just do it the most flattering way. So the picture on the left, her part, the way her part's going, she should be turning her head to the left, tilting it that way. You can see how much more comfortable she looks and how much you can see her face even better. Her, her hair's not trying to hide her eye. So tilt the head the way the bangs fall. That's just a really quick thing. So if you pose them correctly and tilt the head the, direct, the correct direction, you're already you know, two steps ahead of your competitor. And your client won't know why they like the image, but they just will. It's just more pleasing to the eye. So that's our one little posing area tip. Now we're going to talk about a lighting tip. I really like dramatic lighting. It's my absolute favorite you know, lighting that we do in the studio. And it's very quick and easy. A lot of times you see a, an image on the right, and you think, wow, that must have took a long time to light that. And in reality, I'm going to show you how we do it very, very quickly and easily. So we're going to start off with our lighting diagram. And our main light is over here on number one. So that is where the main light normally would be. But to achieve the dramatic, all we do is take that main softbox and push it back to the number two spot, the way it's pictured here. We are using a reflector to um, go in the shadow side of the, of the face and of the body. And we do have a kicker light onto the right also. So that is how it is achieved. So in other words, the light on that light position number one is near the front. And then just by moving the light back, number two, you achieve the dramatic lighting. We are using this all the time for every, you know, for seniors. It looks really good if seniors have props and sports, things like that. So it's a great way to access some hobbies and um, important things for people. So I know that many people use the Photoshop term edit when they're talking about their images. Um, I actually don't use that term because I don't understand what people mean by that. I think if you shoot it correctly, then you can enhance it in Lightroom and Photoshop. You know, we shoot what we show, and we show the client very few trendy effects. We're kind of old-fashioned in the way that we just shoot and show good, clean portraiture. I'm going to give you a few tips that I use every day when I'm using Photoshop, and also some tips on how to keep your work um, flowing and organized in Photoshop. So the first thing is that organization is the absolute key from the start. Way back in 2005, when we went fully 100% digital, it was kind of mind-boggling for me, thinking, how are we going to have all these cards? You know, back then we were all using 512 cards, and what was I going to do with all these cards, and how are we going to keep everything straight? And we came up with, you know, basically a capture, a session log. So every client would get a little sheet like this. Um, what we do is we take each of our cards that we have, and we use a label maker or a Sharpie, and we number them. I think that's important because if you have any drop frames or if you have any, anything wrong at all with a card or it's showing up badly, you know which card was bad so that you can get it out of circulation and throw it away. So the photographer just writes their name and their school on this little sheet of paper. And at the bottom right, they're going to also put the card number onto the sheet of paper. That way we know which card is associated with these images. 
We do make every single senior that is not one of our contract schools, because we do have a few contracts, but if they are not one, we do make them select a yearbook at this time. And yes, we are just picking it right off the, the camera. We are not doing anything fancy or an iPad or another computer in that room. We just have them look at the, the camera and we get it. That way, in case they, you know, if they want to change it later after we're placing their order, that's fine. But if we don't hear from them again or they're really late, we don't want to be hunting these kids down to know what, what do they want us to send to the yearbook. At least I feel confident that we have the one that they like the best. Then in the black box, it just says all of our different sessions. We have three main sessions of 30, 60, or 90, and occasionally have a yearbook only. So we would check one of those. And in our area, we do a lot of split sessions where kids will come in with straight hair and then they come back later with curly hair. What we want to know is that, you know, do they already have images in our system so it would be a, an enhancement like a part two? Um, is it retakes? You know, a lot of kids around here don't have, um, let's say they, their football helmets went out to be reconditioned. They didn't have it at the time of their session. They want to come back later. That would be a good thing that we would, you know, go ahead and check the second session. That way we know that we're not going to give somebody two number ones. You know, we're going to go ahead and number them in the correct order. So after the sheets and the cards go up to our digital department, we have a daily file log sheet. I think that this is the most important sheet in your studio, and, and I, I totally believe that. I think it doesn't matter if you do one session a week or you do, you know, 10 a day or whatever you're doing, everybody needs a daily file log sheet. Um, I'll just explain ours really quickly here. We do have two studio locations, so ours is either an H or an M. You put the date that we're photographing them. You put the name of the session, and then the session type would be, is it a school, is it HHS, that's their school code, or was it their nine-month-old baby club session? That's what our initials are for that. Once we bring our files into Lightroom, it gets an X. So after each step is completed, that's when we put an X off our sheet. After we do any enhancements, you know, edit through them, whatever we have to do in Lightroom, when we go to export them into JPEGs, then we would do another X. Where it says burn raw, what we do is, after we would have many people on this sheet, we would have, you know, five, six, seven clients in a row, then we go ahead and we burn a DVD of all their raw files as our backup. So the next five, six, seven people are all going to have the exact same number. This is so if we ever have to find, you know, somebody's pictures from long ago, all we have to do is find out the date of their session, look that up, then we would just pull out this sheet according to that date, and we would know exactly which CD their images are on. For us in the volume that we're doing, it's, and we don't shoot a lot of images, it would just be a real waste for us, and a lot of time wasting for us to have to burn a DVD or a CD for every single individual client. So we do group them together. Then after we actually crop them, logo, put any image effects we're going to put on them, whatever we're going to do after that step is done, we would X that. And then we would either order an image book, because we still do some, quote, proof books for clients, or their projection client. So if we look right here where there's an X where it says image books ordered, that means they needed an image book and the image book was ordered. They did not need projections, so it's dotted out. Thomas Jones, on the other hand, he just has dots through the image book ordered. That means he's going to be a projection client. He did not pay his advance to, to get an image book. He's going to be solely projection. So when you look at our sheet, we can see that Thomas Jones, his, his images were imported into Lightroom, but nothing has been done with them yet. The very last column is called Show. That means have they been put in a file that um, they've been put on Facebook, they put in a folder of our favorites for our marketing mailers for the future, for speaking engagements, all that kind of stuff. That all after I you know, personally looked at them and I picked out the ones that I'd like, they go in the Show, fo the show folder. So as you can see, this is really important. I just never liked, even when I was all by myself years ago, and you're the one responsible for doing this, you might think, oh, I can remember that. But you go to lunch, you come back, and you think, I wonder, did I do that? Well, if you have a log and you treat this kind of religiously, like you definitely follow this, you won't have any more questions anymore. So I hope that helps somebody out there. Um, and go ahead and make your own sheet according to your workflow. It will save you a lot of stress and headache. The biggest thing, I think, when we're in Lightroom, um, people Photoshop, a lot of times I'm on Facebook, I see people's images, and I think, oh, their color just seems so bad. They look like they're blue Smurfs or blue Martians. And I think if they just would have a target or something to color balance that very easily, 
it would just make their life a lot better. So um, we recommend and use the PhotoVision target. And I will tell you that years ago, we didn't use any target. We just said, oh, we can eyeball it. We're good enough to do that. And we were teaching at Texas school many years ago, and one of the fellow instructors gave us a target and said, just try this out. I swear you will love it. And we did a, um, a natural light, ambient light situation in a hotel. And, you know, the light was all orange. It was just awful. And we just used a target, and within literally just a second, the color was all cleaned up and was beautiful. And from that day on, uh, we bought, I think, six before we ever left Texas school. And from that day on, we've been using these ever since. So I'll show you how we're using it. Is either we sit it in the scene of their cell, you know, by itself. So like if the senior is in changing their clothing or, you know, the change in the baby, we can set the target in the set, shoot a picture of it, and then use it later. Or if it's a senior or a child's big enough, they want to hold it. A lot of times they want to be helpers. You can see the before image, how blue and how nasty it looks. All we do in Lightroom is pick our eyedropper and touch the gray area or the white area. Most of the time it's the gray area. And you can see the after picture, how it just took out that color and just cleaned it and made it very natural. So I would highly recommend a target or some form of color balance. It will make your life a lot easier on your workflow end. For Photoshop, I really believe that time equals money. And we only have two types of effects in our business, and that is fast and easy. Um, I said before, I'm a little bit lazy in our actual shooting style because I want a lot of variety, but I want to be able to do it quickly and easily. And I feel the same exact way about our Photoshop effects. We have found life camera actions. They are our favorite actions, which is why I wanted to showcase them. Because a lot of times people will question us, well, how did you do that? To be totally honest, it's one click of a button, and it is really that fast. So, I'm just going to show you, this is our very favorite action, it's called Al Grungy, and I just like it for texture. So this would be something that we would actually, you know, show a client is we would take the image on the left, we click one button on the right, and then just have to mask out her skin. So it's very, very fast. Our favorite supplier for templates for um, graduation cards, um, family card, uh, Christmas cards, holiday things, albums, is Charmaine Check with Check Art Studio. So I did want to feature that. The reason I like them is because I like to do things template style, but be able to customize it. So if you went on to the Check Art Studio right now and you looked for this template, you really wouldn't find it because you're looking for gray and it's not gray. This template was actually green. But because she's so nice and puts all of her templates in layered form, I know that I can click on any layer and I can use hue and saturation and I can customize it so that the images look really good in that particular card. So that's why we really, really like the Check Art Studio products. Um, Jen made reference that I'm a form queen, and I have a form for everything. I think I could do an entire webinar on just all the forms we have, but I do want to show you, this is our favorite form. What we did was we took um, all of our favorite products, the products that most people do order, and put them all on one side of one sheet of paper. And now our office people can actually use this form and they can order an art series, a desk print, a gallery print, a form one. They can order some MyPix images and do an art strip all on one sheet of paper, which saves us a lot of work. It helps me because I'm the one that does all the ordering, and it's nice to have everything compact. If you're doing templates at all, I really recommend that in your layers, like every single block in your layers palette is just a different color. Um, for the order form, obviously all the blocks are white so that when you um, write the pose number in, you can actually see it. But when you're actually doing a Photoshop layered version, I really like that there are color blocks. That way you can see very easily, oh, this picture needs to be on top of the red square or the purple square. So, and then all the information is right here. I need to know, like, do they want their name on it? What kind of background do they want a texture on it? Do they want, uh, which kind of font do they want? What style of gallery print do they want? So it's really nice that whatever products that you are offering, you really need to have a form for it so that it goes very smoothly when you're placing your order. And you can just hand make that up. Just take your product, whatever it is, put it on a piece of paper like this, and write down the information that you need. It will save yourself a lot of time. Some more Photoshop, actual Photoshop tips um, would be glasses glare. This is such a simple thing. You know, years ago, glasses glare was a real problem. You know, make your light as high as possible, have the client put their chin down so where they're really uncomfortable with it. 
and you still had a hard time getting glare out. And then you would try to retouch it, and it would literally just take forever. You know, you could spend a half an hour trying to get somebody's eye to look half natural, and I don't care how good you are, it'll never look natural. So what we do is what we would ask the client is, you know, if I was photographing him right now, this is exactly what I would say. I would say, you know, because you have glasses and I see if there's a glare in it, I want to make sure that your picture has no glare. So to make it easy, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the first shot, and then without moving your head a lot, can you just take your glasses off? You can just hold them in your hand. They're not going to be in the way. Take off your glasses, and we're going to take another shot. That way our artists can see what your eyes look like so we can fix the glare. That's how I would phrase it. So take one before the glasses are off, after, and then mask out through the eyes. Very, very simple, quick. It probably would take about less than 15 seconds to complete that, and it looks so nice and natural. It is actually that easy that we are doing that. Like if we would just shoot a sports league outside and somebody would come up for their little soccer picture and they have the transitional lenses and the lenses are, you know, they turn almost like sunglasses, we go ahead and do the exact same process that way they have a true image of their actual eyes behind their transitional lenses outside. It works out really, really nice. So to fix overly dark images, this happens to us quite frequently. And I just want you to pay attention to her hair and the boy's hair. That is the most, the, the difference that you can really see. And what we're going to do is we're going to make two layers. And I am going to show you this step by step, but I'm going to explain it first. So we're going to do two layers. And then we're going to go to image, adjust the shadow and highlight. And then there's a pop-up box that will come up. You just select your desired lightness for your shadow. And then you're just going to mask out the lightened areas to the areas that are too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this quickly. This is a girl. This is just the way it looks, you know, before we've done anything to it. She does have some separation in her hair. You can see that we do have a hair light. You can see it especially down through the bottom, and you can see it up on top of her hair. But I still feel like she's missing detail in her image. So we're going to make two layers using the duplicate icon. So down here is your duplicate icon where the arrow is. And where the top arrow is, that is where um, it's going to make that extra duplicate layer. Now while you're on the top layer, so you can see that it is highlighted in blue. So while you're on that top layer, you want to go to Image, Adjust, and then down here, Shadow and Highlight. That's where you would find that selection. The dialog box is going to come up, and you just want to adjust the amount of shadow until you like it in her hair. So you're not looking at her skin, you're not looking anywhere, you're only looking at her hair. And you want to slide this back and forth, and then you'll say OK. So now what you want to do is you need to reverse your top and your bottom layers, and you want to make a layer mask. So right here, um, where the arrow is pointing to the little icon, the mask, that is your layer mask. You want to make sure that black is on top and that your brush is selected. So all those things have to be done. And then all you need to do is just brush over her hair in your layer mask, which is going to bring your bottom layer through, and you're going to have a before and after. So even though the first one's not bad and we did have a little bit of, you know, some hair light on it, just enhancing it with those few seconds doing that makes a world of difference in the detail of her hair, and she's going to like that way better. There's a couple other ways we can do this. Um, we have, this is the same thing where I was showing you about the dramatic lighting. We push the light way back. The picture on the left is fine. I actually do see detail in her eye and on that side of her face. But if you want to enhance that a little bit more, just go through that same exact process. But now you're just doing a little bit to her face. And so you can see where it's really, it's really, um, you're able to use it for a lot of things. Whenever we have a senior come in and they have a graphic t-shirt, so there's something on their t-shirt, we just take a quick photograph of the t-shirt by itself, a nice big, nice big image of it by itself. And then we try to take a photograph of the senior, maybe off-centered a little bit, um, something so we can actually drop that t-shirt in behind them. And it really creates a nice custom background, something that nobody else is going to have for the year. And it just makes the image, you know, every time we shoot this, it sells. And we're really lucky that graphic t-shirts are, you know, in style. That just happens, you know, we shoot this all the time. We've done it with a lot of different items. You can even do it with their school, the back of a jacket, um, a district logo. You know, something that is important to the kid, you can actually drop this in the background and make very easily make a custom background out of it. The next example I want to show you is how we do some more custom backgrounds. You know, is if you buy blue backgrounds, 
your skin does not have blue in it. Um, this is a trick I learned many, many years ago from Kirk Voplane, and I can't thank him enough for that because we use it all the time. We have a lot of um, blue backgrounds at our studio, and we use them on purpose. You know, even if we knew that this was not going to match this girl, but that's not a problem because in Photoshop, all we have to do is this is the picture normally, and there's only one step to this process. It's all we do is select hue and saturation, so control U is a shortcut, and you want to select the blue channel, and then if you change your hue, that will change anything that's blue in the image. Well, because her skin and her hair do not have blue in them, it is not going to hurt them. It's not going to touch them. It's only going to change the blue background, which is awesome. And then, therefore, she has a custom background. The next tip is something that I literally use all the time, and it is such a saver. Um, I don't know if many of you have had the process of trying to figure out how to get skin, like color caps off people's skin and off their cars and different objects like that. It's a real hassle, and it's really hard. So we're going to look at these areas right here. So all the areas that are green, you can see that they're like a lime yellow green from that awful shirt that is reflecting up into his face. Um, we do a lot of like sport leagues, even like little girls softball leagues, and those girls love this color of lime green for their t-shirts, their uniforms, and we get this awful color cast just like this in all of them. So this technique is that fast and easy. I would even use this for like a memory mate. So I'm going to show you step by step how we do it. You want to make sure that you're on your brush tool which is the first arrow on the left. You want to be in the color mode, which is up at the top, and you can change your opacity. I like mine right around 50% because I don't want to overdo it. You can always add more. You don't want to overdo it. I actually use this tool so much that I actually, in my tool presets, have set up a color brush, which is the arrow on the right. I actually have a color brush mode set up with all these settings. So when I click my tool preset, it goes right to a brush, you know, the size I want, in the color mode, at 51%. So that is my color brush. All you have to do is grab your eyedropper. So your eyedropper is up here on the left, the first red arrow, and then a box will come up. You want to make sure that you click right where the color you want. So I'm going to click right here by his cheek, right next to the color that's awful, and then the color box will come up, and you say OK, and it's going to appear over here on the left on your top swatch. So that is how you would make sure that you pick the correct color that you want. So now the next slide, you can see that our color is active on the top swatch. And all you do is you, you know, you're already on your brush. You just want to color over the area. You can see it's disappearing. It's still on his chin and on his nose because I didn't go there yet, but it's gone right here on his cheek. You can see how it disappears. And then this is the final product. So I can go back. We're going to go back from here where it's awful green to there in no time at all. So it's just a really quick time saving, very, very easy thing. We use it for everything. Um, we have a high school that is purple, has purple uniforms, and sometimes the uniforms, depending on the way the light reflects, some of the, the sports teams don't quite better have purple, they may be a little more blue. We just change it using that. This is a car. You can see the grass from the grass has uh, reflected into his car, and it's made his car green. And the image on top on the right, you can see how we've taken that color right away from his car. You know, this is things that he's not going to notice. You know, we're only going to show him the picture on the right. We're never going to let him see the picture on the left. And he's going to see it. He's not going to know why he likes it, but that's one less thing that he's going to ever complain about. Because I guarantee the picture on the left, he's going to say, I don't like that my car looks green. So we really want to clean that kind of easy stuff like that to clean up very you know, quickly and easily before our client sees it. This is something that I feel like I literally do every day. <laughs> um, we're shooting, especially when we shoot horizontals at our studio, it seems like we're always way too tight on the headroom. And then somebody's going to order one of our products, or they're going to order just wallets. And when you, wall when you order wallets and they have them die cut, it is so close to their head. Um, so this is the overall image. And I just want to show you how we would quickly and easily um, transform our background to make more background of it. So over here on the right, we're going to double click our background layer. That is going to turn it into layer zero. Because if it's a background layer, you cannot do anything with it. It's like locked. It has the lock symbol on it. So double click it to and say OK, which will unlock your layer. Then using your move tool, 
you want to just put your um, cursor on your print and slide your whole print down because what we're trying to do is add more headroom. Then we're going to take our marquee tool, which is in the upper left-hand corner of your toolbox. You want to select that, and you want to select where you can see I have it selected, only the black area. Don't get into his hair. Then while that is selected, you want to transform it. So Control-T, and right here where the arrow is pointing to that handlebar, that's where you want to pull up. So we are extending that black area, and it's covering it up. So you can see the difference. We've just given him a lot more headroom, and it's not going to be cut off, which mom is not going to be happy about. Now you might think, well, that's really, really easy because it's black. But what do you do when it's a, you know, other kind of a background? Well, that's fine. I'm going to show you that too. So in the picture, this picture was actually not cut off. But this morning I was looking for examples, trying to find one. And of course, when you're trying to find something, you can't find it. So I just took her and I said, okay, I wanted to, let's move her to the right. You want to add more background on the left. So if you look at the background on the left, you can see where the, um, the green part is in the background, like the, the edge. You can see it has extended way more on the right and even the chair. So just by using your marquee tool and going down over the entire print, yes, it has extended over the wicker chair, the background, so there is texture. So obviously we couldn't do this tons or to look, you know, it'll be really stretched out. But I guess my point is I'm showing you that you actually can do this even if it is a background, you just probably can't do it as much. Um, actually, this morning we were photographing a preschool, and I had this little guy, and I shot one off-centered on purpose to show you. So the one on the left, I moved the camera over and shot it off-centered to show you again the texture. Then you can see the picture on the right. You can see where um, you see a little, there's a little block that's on the little table, and you can see where that did get stretched out, and the bench that he's sitting on, how the end looks just a little bit stretched. But I guarantee that nobody will ever notice that. And when you go ahead and crop that as a normal 8x10 or whatever, if you need that little bit more room, that little trick is going to help save you tons and tons of, of time. So that concludes the Photoshop little tips. Um, we are going to go into just how to make your business flow. I do have a few things on how to get some new business and what we really like. Um, a, a couple inspiration. I'm really into inspirational quotes lately. And the one thing that I do have to say is that dreams and goals don't work unless you do. You know, I hear a lot of speakers and people stand up and say, write down your goals, and if you dream about it, it's going to happen. Well, yeah, that is true. However, you have to actually work at it. So if you're not going to put forth the effort, then I guarantee your goals and dreams are not going to come true. And I'm here to tell you that it's not easy. You know, I have it hard. We work a lot of hours, and we are constantly working hard to gain new business. So don't think that I have it easy. It's not. It's very, very difficult. And I kind of like that it does take a little bit of work because if it is so easy, everybody would be in business. And I know that in our industry right now, it feels like everybody's a photographer, and to some extent that's true, but a lot of these people aren't going to last because they're not going to put the work into it that it's going to take to make it successful. So the one thing that you want to do is stop making excuses. You want to stop saying that you'll do it tomorrow, and you want to stop acting like it's going to happen all by itself. You know, if think about your promotions or a special that you want to run. When is the last time that you planned a promotion and then you never got around to doing it? You know, right now we are in October. You should have, if you want to do Santa, you know, to gain new business or to get new clients, you should be having your sample already photographed and you should start to be advertising it right now for December. You know, people that wait until a week before they want to do a special, they're the ones that are not going to have a good promotion. It's not going to happen. And they're going to wonder, like, what happened? You know, they're going to think, well, I just don't understand how to do it. Well, that's because they didn't plan it enough, and they didn't give it enough time and enough marketing. So the same thing with, goes with high school seniors. Um, you cannot expect to get your reps or your models, whatever you want to do. You can't expect to do that in April or May before they're supposed to be coming into you in the summer. So it's something you really have to do, and, and it really start, it starts with you. And that is stop making excuses and accept responsibility and get on it. You know, unfortunately, we have to be our own motivator. You really can't look for a Facebook group or friends or an association um, to be your motivator. You need to be motivated every day. So you need to get up every day and say, I'm going to do it today. Because you're the one that has the power to control your own success. You are either going to fail or you're going to be successful, but you're the one that has the power to control that. My first huge tip 
it's really simple, but I think it's really important. And that's always ask. Always ask for return business. You know, no matter what happens, you always need to have something else for your clients. Um, I, I love to shop. I'm really good at it. I spend a lot of time shopping. And, you know, I frequent stores that when I go to check out, they hand me a coupon to come back. They're asking me to come back. They're asking me for some more business. That happens a lot. If you look at your, you know, if you just look at your own retail experiences, then it will give you insight on how you can maybe do things in your own business. So one of the things, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how we ask for return business. And one of them is after we photograph senior portraits, we give them this little flyer. It's actually in their actual pricing book. We want to make sure they know about it. We talk about it in our consultation. Um, basically, it just says, you know, this is an important time for your family. This, this will never happen again. You know, they're all at home before they leave for college, that kind of thing. And basically what we're giving them is, as a thank you for choosing us for their senior portraits, we're going to do a family portrait session for free. And then we're going to take 10% of their senior order and apply it. So in other words, if they spent $1,000 on their senior portraits, we're going to take $100 back, put it on their account as a credit towards a family portrait session. Um, this is a way that we can do to ask for more business. We want the same people to come back. It might not sound a lot, but it's another session. Every time you have another session where those people are coming in and you have a happy customer, they're going to go out and they're telling more people because word of mouth is your absolute greatest marketing referral. There is nothing, nothing better to get new business than a word of mouth. We do a kindergarten through 11th grade portrait special. We do that every year. We're just, as you can see by the date, September 20th, we just finished it on Saturday. We will have a few stragglers left, but we did uh, over 300 of these this year. And we, we get the word out because after we shoot memory made sports, like we might go to a soccer league, we stuff these flyers into that soccer league's image, uh, their packets. So in other words, we're hitting our target audience, we're hitting that age child that we really want, and we're telling them about it. We have the dates, we have the prices, the flip side of this would be actually the price list of it. So we're putting this in, in that. Right now we're busy photographing some nursery schools are just starting, and this is a holiday uh, portrait special that we are putting in that we can mail this to clients, we can do it as a newspaper insert, you could make it as a postcard, you can put it on your website, we can advertise it on Facebook. But what we're doing with this flyer right now is we're going to include it with all of our nursery schools. So as the nursery school package goes back to the parents, this flyer is going to be in it. We're hoping that they come back and use us for some holiday portraits from the different theme specials that we have. We have a save the date for Santa. Um, we're showcasing a family special and holiday cards. So, you know, this is just another way that we can ask for repeat or return business. Occasionally, we do not do this for every quick take, but occasionally on quick takes, we actually are asking for them to give us referrals. You know, we thank them for coming in for the quick take, and then we give them a little card that they can give to friends that their friends can save money. So that's just a referral thing to try to get more holiday business. You know, we want to be ready at all times. We have sheets made up. This is a football cheerleading one. If you are photographing a high school senior, and you're in conversation with the parent, and they talk about how they're on the board or they're the president of the football league and their other kid plays, he's a midget football player, whatever the case may be, you want to make sure that you have papers ready that you can just whip it out and say, well, did you know that we offer team photographs? And this is a little bit about us and everything you know about us, and then include one of your price lists with it. So we have these made up, and this is what we do in our slow season. We have one made up for soccer, for dance schools, um, for every, every team and event photography that you can come up with, we try to have a sheet made up for that so we're ready to moment's notice. Um, Darty at our studio here, he was photographing a senior just about two weeks ago, and he was talking to the mother, and it came up that she is a high school principal of a school district. So he got into a conversation with her. He called up to me from the camera room and said, hey, I have a principal down here. Get me underclass information. Underclass is something our studio would really like to try to get into. So I went ahead and, you know, I had these books already printed. I just changed the name of the school that he was talking about. And he was able to hand it to her in person and talk to her a little bit about it. So be ready. You know, our theory is really we never want to deliver a package, a sports package, a nursery school package. We don't want to deliver anything, even if it's a senior portrait. 
we don't want to deliver it without another offer of some type telling the client about something that we have coming up. You know, if you think about it, it's free. It doesn't cost you any postage. You know, it's just the cost of actually, you know, making a photocopy, basically. So you need to take a little bit of time and make some things up um, and just have them ready. You will be very happy that you did that. Another way that we're gaining some business is we are posting an Instagram picture of every senior during their session. Um, we try to make sure it doesn't look too much like an actual portrait because Instagram isn't a real portrait in my opinion. It's just, you know, tons of filters and it does, the quality is not great. So a lot of times we showcase it with maybe the photographer in the image, maybe some, you know, the, off the background, showing our reflectors, the props, the camera just kind of like an overall view of what's going on during the session. And that's been definitely increasing our Facebook traffic. The other thing that we do is within hours, and I do mean hours, sometimes we tell, if we're not really busy, we'll tell the senior, I bet we'll have your pictures on Facebook before you even get home today. So within hours, we either post one to three images on our Facebook senior page, and that is depending on the size of their session. So if they're doing a small 30-minute session, which is two outfits, we're just posting one image. If they're doing a 60 minute, which is four outfits, they get two images. And if they're doing our largest session, which is uh, 90 minutes, and it's six outfits, we post three. We always try to make sure we have a variety of expressions. This is an example of one girl's three images that we did post. Um, a variety of expressions, props, backgrounds, outfits. We really want them to have to see variety. Um, I know there's a lot of photographers out there that say, you know, they don't like posting them like sneak peeks before their clients actually order and, you know, spend money. I really don't think that's a big deal. We are getting, you know, 95% of our clients are spending a few hundred dollars and giving us an advance. So we have that kind of money already. So if we can post them one, two, or three images of our choice, they might not ever be their favorites or the ones that they really like, but they're, they're us, you know, and that way we control what's being posted. We definitely try in our album if you ever want to go there and look at it, it's a great wealth of posing and, and prop and set ideas because we really try to showcase different images. Um, if I posted a black and white of one senior, the very next senior I would never post another black and white headshot. So we definitely try to make sure that you know everybody has, we're showcasing a lot of variety. Um, I took a screenshot of our Facebook stats. Um, this is just one particular week in the summer. That week we had 70 new likes. We had 1,050 people talking about it and our weekly reach was up 3.2% at 20,000. You know, just by doing that, we are gaining tons of Facebook traffic. And I think it's really important because we are in central Pennsylvania and our senior season is only June, July, and August. Uh, we might have a few residual kids coming in September and October, but it's not many. And then again in the spring, we'll pick up just a very few. So, you know, 95% of our seniors are all shot within three months. We don't have a lot of time to get these kids in here. So we really have to create the excitement and the desire, which is what we're doing by posting these images right away and getting people talking about it. I just took a screenshot of this because this kid was crazy. He's obviously good looking and has a great fan base. Um, he went crazy. Within like a day, he had 80 likes. You know, right now on his page he's showing, he's showing 83 likes. That's just crazy. Since seniors have slowed down, we're into October and we don't have a lot of seniors. Right now, to try to maintain some Facebook traffic, we're starting to upload some action sports pictures. We do work with some uh, closed high schools, and we just, we just pick our favorite 20 images. That's all we're posting, 20 images from every sporting event that we attend. So one of girls soccer, one of volleyball, you know, one of uh, football, that kind of thing. So we're posting 20 images, and we just make an album in our Facebook that'll say uh, Millersburg High School, you know, sports and we just say you know good luck to Millersburg and then we just throw all of their sports images in there and the other thing that we're doing is if we photograph their team picture for like a memory mates type we will post the team pictures there also I really like when the kids tag themselves and it just goes around it goes around virally and it's just it's just to increase traffic increase the awareness you know most moms now are on Facebook and they like this kind of stuff we took a family, um, our family and children, we only upload after they place an order. We do it a little bit different. I don't feel the sense of urgency as far as seniors, like we only have this short amount of time to photograph them, so we have to get the word out there. So 
we do post the family children after they place their order. This family, now they tag themselves all in it, which that definitely is the key to it. The key is to get people to tag themselves in it, and then it's on their wall and it goes like crazy. So they have 92 likes, which actually when I look at it, there's actually 95 likes and tons of comments. So um, it really does work. This just happened last week. Um, I photographed an anniversary couple. This is the image that they chose and they ordered from. And I just posted it, as you can see on our Facebook studio wall, it just says, happy 65th anniversary. No names or anything. And as soon as one person sees it, it just goes crazy. So um, they have 73 likes. And they're very old. So it's, Facebook is definitely not just for your teenagers, teenage clients. One thing that we do to also gain new business is we always offer a free session at our studio for three things. For maternity portraits, for a newborn, but only for under 10 days old. If they are over 10 days old, they absolutely are paying a session fee and they're paying regular price. But if they're under 10 days old, we will do that for free and for their first birthday. We have found that this works great for us. I know a lot of people that say they can't believe that we do this for free, but my theory on this is we are going to try to get, this is when people are looking for a photographer. And if we can get somebody, capture them at their maternity session, and they like us, and we did a great job for them, and they think our price is right, and it was just a really good whole experience for them, I have the, um, the good luck that I have met them before that baby's born, and I can get them to come back, hopefully, for their newborn session. And if you have a client that really, you know, a person they've never met you before, they're always looking for a photographer at their first year birthday. They want something more special. Well, if that client has never come to you before, but now they're calling you about your first year birthday, and they call our city and I say, oh, yeah, we do a free session and 20% off your order, they're more than likely going to book with our studio as opposed to somebody who has a session fee and is not giving them a discount. I want to get that client at that first year birthday because then I want to hopefully turn them into a lifetime client which is what we're really going for. We want to look at the long haul. I want to see a baby and photograph their high school senior pictures in their lifetime. This is a card that we have made. It's actually quite old, but we still have it. We still use it. It's just on our front desk counter. Um, you know, a lot of times you're photographing a high school senior and they look at the card and like, oh, I have a little niece. Oh, this is this would be perfect for them. You know, have it available. If you don't tell people about what you have in your specials and you don't have things made up, then they're not going to know about it. So you've got to put the word out there. So you have to be the one to be proactive to showcase what you can do for people. This little guy, he, they called in. They had never been to our studio before. I had no idea who they were. They called in. We said, oh, yeah, we have a one-year-old free session. They did a little mini session. They got 20% off the order. They ended up spending $500. And on Facebook, we posted that one image. That's it. And they got 63 likes. So hopefully we'll get him back for quick takes and other promotions throughout his lifetime. So that's definitely the key, is we want to get them in the door, and then we want to make them into a lifetime client. This is um, maternity portraits. You know, I, we just really feel like you need to give to get a return. That's the most important thing. We do a lot of moms alone, and then we do a lot where we have, you know, the mom and the dad. We are fortunate enough that we do have OBGYN displays and a hospital display our local hospital that delivers babies. We do get quite a few newborns from our hospital display or people, you know, it's, it's amazing how people comment to us. We've gotten senior portraits. The mom will say, I say, how did you hear about us? And she'll be like, well, I work in a maternity ward at the Harrisburg Hospital. I just, I love looking at your images. So I think that's a great testament that even if we're not gaining maybe a newborn client, we're gaining all kinds of clients from just having this display. So, you know, go out there, find yourself a few displays in some boutiques, doctor's offices. It really is well worth it. This is an article in a local magazine, and it's, it's a local magazine to us in our area, and they were featuring a women in business issue. The reason I bring this up is because this is kind of false advertising, but it works for us. We could pay to advertise in this magazine, which is what we did. So they contacted us and said, do you want to pay to advertise? Well, the advertise is not a real advertisement. It's an actual article about us. 
But in reality, everybody that read the magazine, and you know, we of course advertised the heck out of it on our Facebook, so everybody that read the magazine said to us, oh, congratulations that you were honored in the magazine as a women in business. Like they thought it was a really big deal. And when in reality it was not a big deal, we just paid to have it done. So it was a really good article, made us a little more personal. Um, I really think that in your studio, you want to have the personal touch. And I think that it really shows when you do just little things, things like this. Um, you can, you know, talk to your clients about your personal life, about their personal life. Um, be a really good listener, and they will learn to like you. About business, I know I mentioned sports photography an awful lot, and that's because it's lucrative. You know, lucrative photography is the best kind of photography in my mind. You know, it helps pay the bills. It keeps our name in front of the client and fulfills a need. You know. I know a lot of people think, well, I have good clients, they don't go anywhere else for portraits, but I guarantee that if you're not doing their football league or you're not doing their school portrait or you're not doing um, Santa Claus, they are using somebody else or they're spending money with another photographer and it's not you. So we really try to keep that in mind and we want to fulfill a need. So we love to do sport leagues. Um, you know, even a $13 memory mate, it generates cash. It, you know, people, people are crazy, people spend a lot of money. We quite often have sports teams that, you know, one person, one child will spend over $100 on a sports mate. Um, we are not doing the fancy sports posters that a lot of photographers are doing. Again, I just don't think that the time and the amount of effort is worth it for us. As long as we can keep our clients happy with just our memory photography, then that's what we're going to do. But the one thing is that you want to be is you want to be their photographer. You know, they want when they refer to you with their friends is you want them to call you mom. So you want to, you want them to be in a group of moms and you want them to say, well, my photographer does our football league also. So you want to just keep that in mind when you're talking about business and how to gain business is you want to try to fulfill the needs of what your clients are looking for and you want to be personable and you need to have a lot uh, promotions coming up and ready to be able to tell them about it. So you want to market yourself often in a variety of ways and very often. So you can do that through your community, through community groups, um, through doing services for your community. You want to, you can advertise in your newspaper, you can advertise on Facebook, and you can have displays. So there's a lot of different ways that you can try to gain new business. I do want to show you um, a special offer that we have is we do offer backgrounds. They are a wrinkle resistant material, which is like a freedom style, freedom cloth style background. They're all 70 by 90, which is an awesome size. Um, it's just perfect for one or two people. And we are running a, I'm sorry, skip, we are running a promotion. Um, if you use the promo code PHOTOBIZ starting today, there, everything's on sale from $175, it's now $135, so it's saved $40 until Wednesday, October 15th. We have a variety of scenics, we have a variety of painted backgrounds, a lot of abstracts. Um, we use them every day in our studio, and we have sold tons, so we know that we have a lot of happy clients out there. How to contact us on our Facebook and our website is right there. And then I do want to tell you about one other conference that we have. It's called SYNC. Um, SYNC is a conference. This will be the fifth year, and it's going to be held in Florida, February 1st through the 4th, 2013. It's going to be in St. Pete Beach, Florida, and it's at the Tradewinds Resort. If you want to go to our website, which is SYNCSeniors.com, it has everything on there, all the information you can possibly want. We have a killer lineup with tons of qualified speakers. We have some shooting classes. There's a little bit of teaching style for everybody. Um, so go there, check out all the information. I promise you will not be disappointed. You can stay connected with us um, at Sync Seniors on Facebook or on Twitter at Sync Seniors and then our website at SyncSeniors.com. Sign up on our email list. We'd love to have you come, love to you know, hear about our show. I do want to put a special plug in for H&H &H, our color lab. It's our full service lab. We've used them for a couple years, and we literally use them for everything that our studio does. Um, they offer a great sports program and underclass. The studio work is phenomenal. Um, and the customer service, just like PhotoBiz, is first rate. So again, thank you so much to PhotoBiz for having me today. 
if I can answer any questions, I would love to do that. Um, and I just want you to know that your final thought, my final thought of leaving you today is that the secret to getting ahead is just to get started. So in other words, go out and do something. Don't just sit back and wait for business to come to you. Don't sit back and just think that your photography is going to magically get better or that you can go ahead in your, in your head and keep all of your files straight. You know, go ahead, do something. Go make your form right now. Um, go brush up on some poses and clean up your studio and just do something to get ahead. And I wish you all the best and success. Thank you. Well, thank you, Colleen, for such a great presentation. We are now going to answer some questions from the audience. If you have a question, please submit it through the questions box in the webinar software. We do have a number of questions that have already come in, so I'm going to go ahead and read off a few. First, uh, we've got from Teresa. Where do you order your flyers? Um, our flyers are ordered from growl.com. So it's G-R-O-W-L-L.com. Um, a lot of our simple flyers, like for instance, if I was just putting something in our nursery school papers, like the holiday special, we may not actually get that custom printed. We may just print them off ourselves, you know, duplex on our printer that we have at work. But if we are expecting a large quantity of things, we do use Growl. Great. Now a question, uh, actually two-part question from two different people that overlaps a little bit. So Darren Thompson and John Wilhelmson are asking, in your camera room, how tall are your ceilings, and what is the size of your camera room? Well, because we have two locations, when I was, you know, showing different sections of it, they were all different rooms. So um, I'm going to talk about the room that I'm most familiar with, um, the room with the traveling hair light. That room is, that, that entire building is um, nine foot ceilings, so they're not especially huge, so the rail does go right to the ceiling, they're nine. And the whole room itself is probably uh, 20 by 35. Great. Next question comes from Lewis. Do you limit the frame styles and colors when you're providing the different templates that you're using? Yes, we do. We have probably about six or seven different textures that they can um, use as backgrounds. Now, the textures is just the texture that I can color match it you know, in human saturation so that it looks better with our images. And the frame styles, they have about uh, 15 different frame styles to actually choose from. Fantastic. That's a lot of choices. Do you have to worry about permission or model release of any action shots that you post? There are a number of people that are asking different questions about how you handle being able to post people's pictures on Facebook. We have never had a problem ever. Um, it's a public event, so we have never had a problem. We're not tagging people in it. If somebody would call us and say, I don't like that my child is on there, we would immediately take it off. We've never had that happen. So I really don't think it's a problem. We're not selling those images. They're there free for the kids to have and love. And you know, everybody seems to really like to have those images. We get thank yous all the time for doing that. And maybe it would be different if we had them on our website and we were trying to sell them. I'm not sure about that, but we are not, we're not going there. Okay, so you don't have them sign releases of any sort then? No, it would be totally impossible to go to every team that, you know, like the visiting team that we wouldn't even know and get model releases for everybody. So we, we don't do that. Okay. What size are your art series collages? Uh, the art series, our small one is 11 by 14 and the large is a 16 by 20. Question from Zoe. Joe, I'm sorry. Um, he's saying that um, he's found that sometimes when they tag people tag themselves on Facebook, that the comments go on other people's pages and not theirs. What do you do to help people keep the comments on your page? Yeah, I really don't know what to say about that. I know that's going to happen. Um, if you know any kid, my, my, I asked my daughter this just the other night we were discussing it, and she said that a lot of kids just take a screenshot and then they upload it to their Facebook. So if they upload it to their own wall, then the comments are over on their wall. So the key is definitely to get them to tag it, you know, right away, or, or if you can somehow tag them, that would even be the best. Then it goes to your wall. So I don't really have an answer for that. Um, it's just the way it goes. Just make sure that your name and logo is actually on the image so that they know where it came from. 
this time we've got a question from JC. She said she's very interested in working with OBGYN and hospitals for displays. Who do you recommend speaking to when you call to introduce the idea? Uh, just the person in charge is like the office manager. You know, the physicians really couldn't care less. They're not involved in that. They, they don't want to run the day-to-day -day operations of the office. So uh, we definitely talk to the office manager. And, you know, in the past, now, currently, I will tell you, we do not have this going with the offices that we have. We're just allowed to hang in there, you know. But you can call it free part. Like, I would like to decorate your office for free. You know, everybody likes something for free, and that really does help. You know, you can say, you know, it's valued at a $5,000 investment, and I'm willing to do it for free um, in exchange for just letting me put some brochures on the, um, like, in the waiting room, something like that. In, the, in years past, we did have one that we operated with where when the mother would come back at six weeks, we offered a free gift. So we made up certificates that looked like they were from the doctor, but the doctor never paid for them. So we would offer the child a free, you know, session at three months old, and, and that did work well, but we don't have that office anymore, they retired. And the new offices that we have, we have not had to, to do that, but that is definitely a good way to try to get your foot in the door. Great. Another question along those lines, people are curious uh, about uh, when you have different sports pictures and so forth that you post on Facebook, do you provide a way for people to be able to purchase prints directly from you? No, if they want something, then they can just, you know, give us a ring on Facebook and, and tell us about the image. But we don't, we don't really have that. Um, years ago, like I'm talking maybe eight, nine years ago, we tried the whole method of putting them on our website and selling them to people, and we didn't have good orders. It was awful. So we decided now it's just better just to have it like as a little bonus. And I will say that I'm very selective. If we know the schools that we're photographing, like if we know those kids well, and they did not come to us for senior pictures, then somehow they usually don't get on our website for, you know, sports action pictures. We try to definitely feature underclassmen or seniors that have used us, and we try to shy away from a senior that kind of snuck our studio, um, and that really does work well for us. At least it makes me feel better, let's put it that way. <laughs> When you are photographing seniors specifically, are you doing anything with them to be able to get model releases for Facebook, or are you handling those the same way you do the live action sports? No, every senior that comes in, they are signing a model release, or their parent is signing a model release that we have. That's just part of the paperwork that we have um, when they first arrive for their session. And probably out of all the seniors we photographed this year, which is hundreds, we probably had maybe under 10 people decline if they did not want to be on Facebook, which is fine, and we just don't include them. Great. Question from Anthony, does having a phone book listing actually help? I don't ever use a phone book, so we just take the free ones they offer us. I would never personally advertise the Yellow Pages that I think went out, you know, 10 years ago. Um, so, no, I do not recommend it, and we do not do it. Well, a great question about one of your very own products. People would like to know what the website is where they can buy your background. Uh, it's Colleen and Co. So C O L L E E N A N D C O four, which is the number four pros. Colleen and Co. Four Pros dot com. Great. And it looks like the last question for the day. Do you? Um, sell your form templates in terms of the different forms that you're having? Um, well, we, we actually do sell our, our products that we make. So like I sell art series templates and all that kind of stuff, which we didn't really talk about, but I do sell that kind of stuff. And if somebody buys those products, then yes, I'll be more than happy to give them the template forms because they go with the products. You know, I don't see the benefit to selling the form of the products when it's not the product that they're actually using. So no, I don't actually sell just the form, if that makes sense. Great. If somebody would like like a daily file log sheet or something, I'd be more than happy to send them that, like just so they have an idea, of, you know, to get started on their own. They should just, you know, kind of email or Facebook me, and, and I'll make sure they get it. Okay. So do you have a list somewhere of all the different forms that you have available? No, I don't, because we don't really sell them or anything. But, you know, like I said, if somebody saw something they really like, I'll be more than happy to, you know, to get it for them. Great. I'm getting a few notes in here that people want to email you privately with more specific questions on forms. 
Okay, so my email would be Colleen, C-O-L-L-E-E-N-A-N-D-C-O, Colleen and Co. at Comcast.net. Thank you. And it looks like one more came in. How are you getting your marketing materials to your seniors when you're approaching a new school? Um, well, the schools that we actually work with, which we work with four of them, they would actually give us their names and addresses so we mail it directly to them. But that's only a small fraction of our senior business. Our non-contract senior business is larger. And to get the word out to them, um, we do a lot of things by snail mail. You know, we have our Facebook, which is fine, but we really do believe in the power of direct marketing and direct mail. And we do have a couple representatives. You know, people might call them models, ambassadors, whatever you want to call them. We call them the crew. So we do have a few crew members that their job is to go out and get us names and addresses to which you know, we give them certain benefits for that service. So I would say we do the majority of ours is through direct mail marketing. Great. Well, we've got a few more questions trickling in if you have a few more minutes. Great. What sport company do you get the items that you sell? We are using h, &H for everything. Um, a couple years ago, we, we switched to h, h primarily because of their sports program. So it's, it's a you know, template drop and drag kind of thing. Everything that we sell, they make, and we just love it. A one-stop shop, it sounds like. That's right. We are very happy with them. That's great. Do your high schools receive a percentage of your sales? Uh, no, none of them do. None of the four that we work with do. OK, great. Well, thank you so much for taking time to answer everybody's questions today. Well, thank you for having me. You're very welcome, and thank you everyone for your great questions. Uh, we had a wonderful webinar today, and we will make sure that a recording will be posted on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash photoviz. Also, be sure to check out our blog and watch our email for updates about future webinars. The next webinar will be How User-Friendly Is Your Site on Tuesday, October 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Anna from our passionate support team. Thank you again, Colleen, for such a great webinar today. Thank you. Well, that concludes this episode of PhotoBiz Live. Have a great day, everyone.